Hey everyone, welcome to our next in our series of free webinars. Uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Brad Mayfield. I'm the Director of Business Development for Greater Therapy Centers. Um, Caitlin King is our presenter today and I'm going to give you a little bit of a background uh, bio on her and then turn it over to Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin received her Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology from the University of Georgia in 2013 and acquired her Doctorate in Physical Therapy from Mercer University in 2016. She completed a residency in Orthopedic Physical Therapy at Mercer University in 2017 and achieved her board certification as an Orthopedic Clinical Specialist. Caitlin has uh, been practicing in outpatient orthopedics since 2016 and began working with Greater Therapy Centers in 2018. She has experience working with patients of all ages and fitness levels, from the weekend warrior to the collegiate athlete. She holds advanced training and certification in dry needling for the treatment of myofascial pain with myopain seminars, fall risk and injury pre prevention through Otago program, and clinical treatment of the fitness athlete with Titleist Performance Institute. She's also an APTA credentialed clinical instructor for student physical therapists. In her specialization in outpatient orthopedics, she focuses on treating orthopedic conditions through effective communication with her patients, manual therapy to restore joint function and mobility, functional movement assessment, and strength and conditioning. Her multimodal approach allows for a unique patient-centered treatment plan to meet the patient's specific goals. Her clinical interests include orthopedic injuries of the shoulder, functional evaluations and movement assessment, manual therapy, and myofascial treatments, persistent pain, health and wellness, and injury prevention. Caitlin is a member of the American Physical Therapy Association, the Texas Physical Therapy Association, and the American Academy of Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapy. In her spare time, Caitlin enjoys an array of activities, including spending time with her husband, traveling the globe, weightlifting and Pilates, hiking, dancing, and cheering on the Georgia Bulldogs. All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Caitlin. We have a section here for questions, so if you have specific questions, type those. I'll be moderating, and I can uh, help uh, get those to Caitlin at the end of the presentation. Otherwise, take it away, Caitlin. Thank you for the introduction, Brad. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. So today, I'm going to be talking specifically about golf, but you can also apply this to different swing sports. So if you're an athlete of any sort or enjoy just getting out and playing different sports, um, glad that you're joining this morning. So again, today is going to be a little bit more specific to the golf swing. So we're going to talk about upper body mobility for um, the golf swing. All right. So the first thing I want to start with is just talking to you guys a little bit about what TPI is. So TPI stands for Titleist Performance Institute. It's the leading educational organization dedicated to the study of how the human body functions within the golf swing. So they've worked with anyone from your top tour professional golfers to just people who enjoy getting out on the course and playing around a golf. So they took a, they did a large study analyzing golfers from um, professionals to just your regular golfer getting out there playing a game on the course. They analyzed all the data and they looked at how the different swings could make the golf swing more efficient or how the different movements of the human body could lead to potential injury. So um, then we'll go into a little bit about why we're gonna dis discuss mobility today. And we're gonna look at mobility specific to the upper body and specifically focusing on the thoracic spine. And then at the end, I'll give you four exercises that you can do to get up and get moving and help increase your mobility in your upper body for the golf swing. So again, looking at what TPI is, Titleist Performance Institute, their philosophy is that they believe there's not just one way to swing a golf club. So there is one healthy, efficient way to swing, but this may look different for each individual golfer based on how their body can move. So um, they created the TPI assessment, which looks at different movements in correlation to the golf swing. So it's going to break down the golf swing and assess how the golfer moves within each of those movements. And then it gives you a nice handout that you can provide to the golfer explaining how they scored on each of those individual assessments. And then from how you're moving and how you rated on that assessment, you can create a functional movement program or strengthening program or power program based on what the impairments are that were found and what the deficits may be and how those correlate to the swing mechanics. 
So with a TPI assessment, like I said, it's going to be an array of assessments that you do on the golfer, but then you're also going to look at the golf swing and how that person moves within their golf swing. Because you can't necessarily make a functional movement assessment unless you look at the movement as a whole and then break that movement down into its component parts. So for mobility, what I want you guys to think about today is the body as an alternating pattern of stable segments that are connected by mobile joints. So if you look at the picture on your screen of the skeleton over here, you've got different sections marked in red and different sections marked in blue. So the blue are gonna be your main stabilizing segments on the body. And then the red are gonna be where you're primarily gonna move. And again, this is a little bit more specific to sports and the golf swing. Um, obviously with different movements of daily life, you're gonna move in different parts and all joints are mobile joints. But again, in specific relation to the golf swing today, Looking at this picture, I want you to think of the blue segments as your stable parts and then the red parts as your mobile. So if you look specifically at the spine in the picture, the blue part is going to be your lumbar spine. So that's where you want the most stability to come from in your golf swing. And on the front side of the body there, you obviously have your core. So that's going to play huge into any swing sport. And then above that, you have your thoracic spine, and that part is marked in red. So that is a huge mobile segment in the golf swing, especially to get your mobility into your back swing. You need a lot of rotation there. So for the majority of golfers, if they have pain in their golf swing, it's going to come in the lumbar spine. A lot of this reason may be because they're compensating and moving a little bit too much in the lumbar spine. And the majority of the time that happens because there's not enough mobility in the thoracic spine or in the hips. So again, those segments above and below the lumbar spine, you want those to be mobile or move a lot so that the lumbar spine can stay stable and you can reduce the risk of injury there. So in keeping with that concept, thinking about this alternating pattern of stable segments connected by mobile joints, the reason you want this for the golf swing, again, like I said, so you can maintain a proper sequence in your backswing and get enough torso rotation, and then also to maintain your stability in the lower body. So you want good stability in the lower body as you rotate through your backswing so that you can generate enough power to drive the ball a good distance. And then we're also looking at avoiding injury. So when you are moving too much in one of those stable segments and not enough in the mobile segment, that can cause muscle imbalances, which, are then, which then can lead to potential risk of injury. All right, so now the fun part. Uh, if you guys wanna stand up, you can actually move through this. I'm gonna go through a series of four exercises to help you increase your thoracic mobility. You're also gonna get kind of a little bit more bang for your buck because you'll get a little bit of movement in the shoulders and then some stability through the lower body as well. So if you wanna stand up for this part, you definitely can. The, it's gonna go through, I'm gonna go through four exercises. There's videos of them so you can see how to do them. And I'm gonna talk you through how to do each of them. All right, the first one we're gonna do is the overhead golf club press. You're gonna get a little rotation through the thoracic spine. If you're at home and you don't have your golf clubs nearby, it's fine. You can just use your arms overhead. Or if you've got a broomstick or a dowel or a PVC pipe laying around because you've been working on some projects or cleaning the house, you can grab that and use it as well. This exercise is good for getting mobility through the thoracic spine mainly. You're also going to get some mobility through the shoulders and a good lat stretch with this. If you don't have the mobility in your lats, we'll talk about a few ways that you can modify this. So... Go ahead and grab your golf club if you've got it, or like I said, you can do this without it. Standing in your golf posture to start, you're gonna hold the golf club. And then I want you to extend your arms out in front of you and bring them so that they're right over your head. After you're in that position, you're gonna rotate to the side. So if you're a right-handed golfer, you are gonna rotate towards your right side to help improve your mobility in your back swing. With this exercise, I want you to grab, I want y'all to watch it one more time. Make sure the golf club stays overhead. So I'm going to press it up here and then as you rotate, I don't want the end of your golf club coming in front of your body, but I want it to stay right in line with those shoulders and the shoulders stay right over the head. And I'll play that one more time for you guys. Again, extending the golf club out in front of you, lifting it overhead, 
rotating as much as you can, keeping your lower body stable. So not a lot of noise or movement happening in those hips or the knees. This is just primarily for upper body rotation. The next one is a good stretch. Again, for this one, you're gonna mainly focus on rotating through the thoracic spine or the upper part of your spine, upper mid back. You're gonna get a little bit of stretch in the shoulder for this one and opening through your chest. So again, a good exercise for helping with your back swing and your thoracic mobility. For this exercise, again, start in standing and you're gonna spread your feet about hip width apart. So spread those feet about hip width apart, bending forward first at the hips and then come down into a squat position. Take one hand, place the elbow on the inside of your knee. Other hand is gonna come onto your opposite knee. Then the opposite arm is gonna extend in front of you and you're gonna rotate up towards the ceiling. I'll play that for you again. So starting feet with a feet about hip width apart, bending forward first at the hips and then down into a squat position. Tuck one elbow on the inside of the knee, opposite hand comes down in front of you, rotate up towards the ceiling. This will look a little bit different for each person depending on how much mobility you have through your thoracic spine and again through that shoulder. But I want you to try and move as evenly as you can. So not overextending through the shoulder, but really trying to make the motion come from mid part of your back and then moving the arm with you. So rotating through the mid part of the back, letting the shoulder go a little bit further at the top, but don't let the shoulder lead the motion, lead the motion with middle part of your back. Third exercise here, you're gonna come into a half kneeling position. So think about this as a lunge. You may wanna grab a towel or a pillow or if you've got anything soft nearby, if you've got hardwood floors at home, because this can be a little um, painful on the knee to kneel on the knee, so just be mindful of that. So again, same concept here. We're looking for rotation in the thoracic spine because that's a huge component of the golf swing, especially for getting into your back swing. So if you guys notice, there's a little bit of a pattern here with these exercises. All right, so for this one, talking about the setup first, I want you guys to come down into a lunge position. Um, again, you can do all of these exercises on both sides. If you wanna focus to your specific swing mechanic, then right-sided golfer versus left-sided golfer. So this is gonna show right-sided golfer here. So that right foot's gonna be in front of you, left knee is gonna be down on the floor if you're a right-handed golfer. Um, for this, you don't need the golf club. If you've got one nearby, great. If you don't, you can just cross the hands over the chest and you'll see that here in just a second. So taking that golf club, bringing it in front of you, cross the hands over the chest. Then you're gonna rotate over the forward leg and tilt to your side. So same, rotating to the same side, tilting to the same side. You'll notice here, I rotate three times. Each time you're gonna rotate and bend. And then with that rotation, you're gonna find new mobility. So you're gonna rotate a second time and then tilt over to the side and then turn even a little bit further that third time and rotate again. With this exercise, if you have a history of low back pain or if you have pain in your golf swing, it may be a little dicey and you may get pain. So if you do get pain with this exercise, don't do it. That would be a good reason to come see me or one of my colleagues. And we'll get into that after these videos. Um, so again, if you have pain in your golf swing or if you have pain with any of these exercises, stop the exercise and then go see someone that can help you figure out why you're having pain because all of these exercises can be modified to the individual golfer. So wherever you are in your golf journey or in your sport history, all of this can be modified. So you can start from one place and work up. Last exercise here. This one's a little bit easier. So this is, we're gonna end with a stretch. So again, if you don't have a golf club or tall PVC pipe or broom handle, go to a door frame. You can also use a door frame for this. 
You're going to start in standing again. Your golf club, long broomstick, PVC pipe, that's going to be over to the side of you. This one you will do on both sides no matter what uh, hand you usually swing the golf club with. So you're going to start standing. Bring your golf club out to the side. Opposite hand is going to come across your body. You're going to grip onto the top part of that PVC pipe or golf club and then lean your body over so that you feel a stretch in your lat. So that's gonna be down the side of your shoulder coming down into the back. And I'll show you guys that one more time. So again, standing tall, broomstick golf club, PVC pipe out to the side, opposite hand comes across the body here, lean your hips away, Bring your chest, head, neck, and shoulders down towards the floor. Feel that stretch through the side of your body. All right, so those are my four exercises I have for you guys today. Um, if you have any questions or want to see those again, this will be posted so that you can take a look at the whole presentation and listen to it again, and it'll have my voice over the top of the exercises as you're going through them. You can also go to the TPI website. So I've listed these specific exercises here. But if you go to www.mytpi.com, you'll find tons of great resources. Again, this is going to be specific to the golf population. There's articles on there. If you like reading research or just have some curiosity about how to get stronger in your golf swing, how to hit the ball further, have more power in your golf swing, great articles on there for that. Also, tons of different exercises. Um, so super good resource for golfers. One thing that I do love about TPI is the fact that it works as a team-based approach. So obviously I'm the medical professional on the team as a physical therapist. So you would come to see me if you have pain in your golf swing, or let's say you went to your golf pro and they found a few things that they're working with you on in your golf swing to make you a better golfer. But they come to me and they say, Hey, Caitlin, you know, Bob really just can't rotate through his thoracic spine and we're having a hard time getting there in his golf swing. Could you check it out? That's where you would come and see myself or another physical therapist that may have the TPI certification and they can do a swing assessment. So obviously your golf pro's swing assessment is going to be a little bit more in depth and it's going to be more specific to your golf game and how to make you a better golfer. When I'm looking at the swing assessment, I'm looking for compensations or irregular movement patterns within that golf swing. And then we'll do the TPI assessment, which is the breaking down of your golf swing and me looking specifically at how each segment of the body moves so that I can see where the specific impairment is. And then we would create a program for you to help make your body move better so that your golf swing can be more efficient. So. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, please, please let me know. Uh, we do offer telehealth right now with everything that's going on, but hopefully we'll be open and running again at full capacity within the next few weeks. Um, this assessment is great because it can be done anywhere. We can do it in the clinic. We can do it on the golf course. And then same thing with a lot of these mobility exercises. I know we're all at home right now, so you can do them at home, but you can also take a few that we did today and use those on the golf course as a nice warm up. So if anybody has any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, I work at the Rowlett location, so I've got our number here for you guys. And then I also have my email on this slide. If you'd like to reach out and ask me questions directly, you can email me at cking at gtc-pt.com. Thank you guys so much for listening today. Hey, Caitlin, this is Brad. Well, we did have one question. Um, okay. Someone asked about using uh, bands, exercise bands. Uh, can those be used in, uh, in those exercises as well? So what I went through for you guys today was more mobility. I don't necessarily bring the bands into these specific exercises for what I'm trying to achieve today. Because again, with this, I want you really focused on more stretching and getting through a good rotation in the thoracic spine or getting a good stretch in your lat, getting good mobility of the shoulder. So there are exercises where we will bring resistance bands in, but for the sake of the goal that we're trying to accomplish today with these exercises, no, I would not use a resistance band. Okay, um, and then 
Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, some people are asking if they can get the uh, recording of this. Yes, it will be available. It takes about an hour to get it uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, Greater Therapy Center's YouTube channel will be available there. Um, certainly my email address was in the sign up to this or Caitlin's, you can email us and request it specifically. But if you just want to go hit up uh, the GTC YouTube channel, uh, this entire presentation will be there, like I said, within about an hour. Um, like Caitlin said, we're open uh, for face-to-face uh, care at this point on a limited basis, uh, trying to keep uh, everybody safe and healthy. But we we definitely uh, can see folks if, if you need to come into the clinics, but we also have telehealth available. Um, we have webinars that will be taking place every weekday through May 1st, uh, different topic every day presented by a different physical therapist in our company. So make sure you check our Facebook page to sign up for all of the upcoming webinars. All right. Well, that concludes our presentation. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate this information, Caitlin. It's great. Awesome. As a, as a golfer Absolutely. myself, I really need a lot of this and uh, to work on my mobility and things. So this has been great and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.